So, good morning. Jonathan of Eco Cars in the new 2018 40 kilowatt Nissan Leaf. Now, there's been a fair amount of chatter on social media, uh, Twitter in particular, and SpeakEV, and various other web pages on this growing concern over the lack of rapid charging ability of the new 40 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf. Now, before we start, I love all EVs, I love what Tesla's done, I love what Nissan's done, but none of these great manufacturers are free from being criticised, where criticism is due. So this is my little two pence worth. Last weekend you might have seen that myself and James Coates of James and Kate on YouTube, and another chap called uh, James as well, James number two, we had a bit of a challenge. We had this 2018 40 kilowatt leaf doing my 40th personal trip from Leicestershire to Aberdeen Docks or from Leicestershire to basically John O'Groats, the northern tip of Scotland, in a pure EV. Now I've done this in 24 kilowatt hour leaf, I've done it in Peugeot Ions, Mitsubishi iMev, Citroen C0, I've done it in Nissan's ENV200 van, I've done it in a Tesla Model S, I've done that trip in a variety of pure electric vehicles and also plug-in hybrids for my customers here on Orkney. Now I planned my route meticulously and I know where to stop. So with great excitement when the 40 kilowatt finally came to me, I thought well, this is great, I'm going to be using far less stops because comfortably 150, 160 miles I'll be able to get up with so many fewer rapid charge stops over a 24 kilowatt and even fewer than a 30 kilowatt. But as you've probably seen from all the action on social media, it didn't really work out like that. The issue is that after the second rapid charge on this car, the car will automatically knock down the charge rate. So it basically means it can charge at 22 or 24 kilowatts, around about that. Um, giving a total charge time to sort of 75 to 100 percent of around four to five hours which is not rapid charging. Now there's lots of pros and cons a lot of people say well if you're going to drive long distances like over 400 500 miles you shouldn't be in an EV. Well I'd, leaving that aside when I've done that trip in a 24 kilowatt hour leaf I had no restrictions on rapid charging. Each time I stopped, it would pull up to 50 kilowatts depending on the rapid, regardless of the battery temperature. 30 kilowatt, a little bit more susceptible, but again, I've never personally been restricted in charge times in a 30 kilowatt. In September 2015, me and Chris Ramsey of Plugged In Adventures, we drove a 24 kilowatt from John O'Groats down to Land's End we spent 40 minutes at Land's End and we turned around and we drove all the way back to John O'Groves. We did 33 rapids back to back without any let up other than just stopping at the services, having a bite to eat, coming back, jumping in the car, driving again. Did that 33 times. Not once did the battery overheat, not once were we restricted in charge times. So taking that crazy drive that we did and looking at the 40, I wouldn't be able to do that in a 40 kilowatt. It would take, by my guesstimation, about five or six hours longer to do that John O'Groats Land's End back to John O'Groats trip. It would take four to five hours longer in this than it would in a 24 kilowatt hour. That's not progress, Nissan. It really isn't. The, you know, the extra range that you've built into this car with a bigger battery is fantastic. But with the extra range comes new EV owners who will go right now I have the possibility of doing five or six hundred miles I will buy one but they will be restricted by the charging speed something needs to happen because you're going to drop the ball well I think you have dropped the ball a little bit the other thing is that the new 60 kilowatt coming out next year is going to have active thermal management 
in other words, a way of cooling the batteries to keep them at a, an optimum temperature, similar to what Tesla does. Sadly, the likes of Mitsubishi, who made the Mitsubishi iMeve uh, and an under licensed Citroen C0 Peugeot Ion, great little city cars, you rapid charge them a couple of times, and even on a hot day, the air conditioning will automatically come on and blow cool air across the batteries thus regulating their temperature. I've never been in an iMeve doing a long trip and I have driven from, from six, seven hundred miles in an iMeve, took a long time but I did it, not once was I restricted. Now the iMeve was developed in 2010, that's eight years ago. So if Mitsubishi had the wisdom and foresight to put some very basic battery cooling by means of the air conditioning system onto their little city car, why on earth, Nissan, have you not done it for the 2018 model? Is it a cost-cutting measure? If it is, it's a massive... If it is a cost-cutting measure, it's a huge mistake because I've heard of several people cancelling their orders based on my trip last weekend from Leicester to Aberdeen. You've got to come up with a fix and you've got to come up with a fix quickly. Just telling people you've got to wait longer at a rapid charger, it's not good enough. <laughs> it really isn't. Now the Nissan Renault Alliance, Nissan and Renault, you, you both developed EVs together. The 40 kilowatt Zoe has, I believe, active air cooling. I think when that gets rapid charged, you can hear some fans kicking in to cool the batteries. There's none of that on this. I just don't understand the logic and I really hope that they sort it out quickly. Now Nissan to their credit have rang me and said they would like to see my car, they would like an engineer to look at it. I feel that's just a knee-jerk response that they're perhaps reading off a script because I think they know there is something amiss. So they don't need to see my car, they just need to look at all the data. They can pull the data off the car look at the data, see what's going on, um, and let's get a fix. Where's well, a software fix? Whether you can make some sort of promise that when the 60 kilowatt comes out, you'll do a swap. You've got to keep the EV community happy. You know what rumours are like, they'll just spread, and before you know it, it could be all over the internet that the new 40 kilowatt Nissan Leaf cannot rapid charge. It can first two rapid charges are fine, the third and the fourth rapid charge are where it gets painful. I was beaten by a 27 kilowatt hour Hyundai Ioniq last weekend by three hours. 27 kilowatts beat a 40 kilowatt electric vehicle over 400 miles. What's going on there? That's, that can't be right. Hyundai is one of your biggest competitors they've got active thermal management. Why have you missed this out Nissan? I love the car, I love the tech. Just having this great tech, the autopilot, adaptive cruise, all the bells and whistles, love it. Brilliant. But that's no, that's not sort of consolation prize for the lack of being able to rapid charge it more than three times. That's unacceptable. So um, let's hope you do something about it. It's going to rumble on and on until you do, Nissan. So um, yeah, listen to your customers. And next time you want to release an EV, give it to some EV owners to test. Let them drive it. Give it to Chris Ramsey. Give it to me. I'll put some crazy mileage on any test vehicle and tell you what it's really like to drive an EV over a big distance. Plenty of willing volunteers, plenty of real EV owners. I've been driving EVs since 2011. A um, lot of experienced EV owners out there who know what they're talking about. So um, there we go. That's the end of my, I suppose you could call it rapid rant. It's usually a rapid rant when my rapid charge, a rapid charger isn't working, but this is um, rapid rant with regard to the new 40 kilowatt Nissan Leaf. 
I have seen hashtag <laughs> um, rapid gate. Whether that will catch on, let's hope it doesn't. We've had diesel gate, sadly monkey gate. Let's not have rapid gate associated with Nissan. The other thing as, as well is the ENV 200 van, the 24 kilowatt hour van, has always had a type of active cooling on the battery and the motor and the inverter because Nissan knew that a delivery van would be doing lots of stop starts, lots of rapid charges. Why on earth have you not fitted that cooling management system to the new leaf? And I'm also going to say that when the 40 kilowatt ENV 200 van comes out this summer, I believe the order books are going to be open or the pricing is going to be announced next week to, for first deliveries in June. Has that ENV 200 still got the same active thermal management type system for its batteries that it had on the 24? If it has, great. Well, why have you not fitted it to this? If it hasn't, there's more egg on your face, Nissan. So there we go, that's the end of my uh, rumblings. Feel free to leave a comment at the end of the video. I never say this at the end of my videos, but click like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.